Now let's look at a, an example of an equilibrium problem using hydrogen, nitrogen, and ammonia. Now you have to understand that this reaction is taking place inside of a vessel that contains all three of these gases or has the capacity to contain all three of these gases and that the volume is fixed. Now if the volume is fixed and the pressure is fixed and the temperature is fixed, we find it developing this equilibrium then of products and reactants. And we'll see how that actually works here. If I look at my initial concentration of nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia, my experiment starts with one mole per liter of nitrogen and hydrogen and zero moles per liter of the ammonia that's produced. Now as we allow the reaction to proceed, when it hits equilibrium, I now have ammonia present and I have decreased the concentration of both of the other substances. Now the second run, we started with no uh, nitrogen or hydrogen and only ammonia and allowed it to run the reverse reaction and at equilibrium, after the reaction is stabilized, remember it's a dynamic equilibrium, we ended up with 0.399 moles per liter of the hydrogen or the nitrogen, 1.1 moles per liter of the hydrogen, and 0.203 moles per liter of the ammonia. So we see in both cases an equilibrium is established. The values are different, but let's see if the ratios are the same. You remember for dealing with the equation, our KEQ, our equilibrium constant, KEQ, is equal to the expression of the products over the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. So if I go ahead and balance that equation with a 2 there and a 3 there, I can now run my expression, products, and each 3 raised to the power of their coefficients divided by the reactants, N2, raised its coefficient, which is a 1, and we don't express the 1. It's there because the symbol is there. And multiply it by the concentration of the hydrogen raised to the power of its coefficient, like that. So now there's the general expression. Now, we're going to take that general expression, and we're going to actually apply this thing and calculate the numerical value of the KEQ. So, we know that the KEQ value is equal to the concentration of the ammonium. 0.157 squared divided by the concentration of the nitrogen, 0.921 to the first power multiplied by the concentration of the hydrogen, 0.763 raised to its coefficient like that. Now, if I put that into a calculator, then I get the ratio of the products over the reactants. It develops for me at this temperature and at this pressure the value of the KEQ, which, then, which ends up to be 0.0602. Now, it is a ratio, all your units cancel out, so we're going to leave it like that as a number. That is equal to our KEQ. So our KEQ value is equal to 0.0602, and we now have that. Now, let's take a look at some shifts in equilibrium. Uh, if we look at a concept known as Le Chatelet's principle, it states that if I apply a shift to this system at equilibrium, it will best relieve the stress. Now, if I were to take more ammonia then and dump it into that container at equilibrium, what would happen? It would shift and produce more of the reactants in this reaction. If I were to uh, add more of the nitrogen or the hydrogen to the same reaction, it would shift to the production of more of the ammonia. But in both cases, this would return to that numerical ratio. Now to show you that, I'm going to do the same thing with this other one. If I take the second reaction and put those numbers in numerically, I end up with uh, 0.203 squared divided by 0.39 multiply that by 1.17 cubed, that also equals 0 0.0602. Even though it's a different set of numbers, the ratio is the same. That is critical with looking at the KEQ.